Why did Claudius Caesar expel the Jews from Rome? <coughs> Giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakakwadash. You know, I did this before some years ago. So um, I was just thinking on it. So I said, let me put another video up. You know, some of my videos were taken down. Some of my pages were deleted. Anyway, um, I put that phrase in, why did Claudius Caesar expel the Jews from Rome? And now I'm going to read this real quick. And then I'm going to click on the source. Anyway, it says, in, in, in Claudius 25, you know what? No, 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 let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. This is uh, Su Suetonius on Christians. Now, remind you, I put in the term, why did Claudius Caesar expel the Jews? And this historian, Suetonius, calls them Christians because the Jews that believed in the Messiah they didn't, they didn't necessarily call them Jews. They called them, um, well, I guess, Christ, Christianos, Christians, meaning uh, followers of the Messiah. And the Greek and in the Latin, the word, um, uh, the, the word anointed or Messiah means <clears throat> is uh, Christos. So that's what they call them, followers of the of the Messiah. So this whole nonsense about the Christians and you got Edomites that are no, the only Christians were Israelites. You didn't you didn't have any Christians from other nationalities. These were Israelites that embraced the Messiah. They believed that this was the Messiah which was forth to come. Ain't no, ain't no Edomites. There was no Edomites calling themselves Christian. That, that's something new. That's something that you... Actually, when you came over... Actually, before you came over here, when you was in Europe, during the time of uh, the, the, rena rena the Renaissance, excuse me, you had a thing called... Renaissance merely means re-meaning back, and Nissan meaning born, born again back to being born or born again. And you had a thing called Renaissance art. And what was Renaissance art? Renaissance art was to the fact that you came back into power, you were going to take down the images of the saints, the Lord, the saints, the Most High, and you were going to repaint them as uh, so-called white people. But your starting point, you had icons, friscos, and mosaics of so-called black people, of the angels, of Moses, of the Messiah, of the apostles, of the prophets, of Mary, of Israelites. And anywhere you went in Europe, where Israelites dwelt, mainly Christian Israelites, there's a dis difference between an Israelite and a Christian Israelite. An Israelite knows he's Israel, Israel, but he doesn't. Ex he didn't. He doesn't necessarily accept that the Messiah uh, came on the scene. <clears throat> so it says. <clears throat> it says uh, the Roman historian Suetonius, A.D. Uh, sixty-nine to A.D. one twenty-two. Uh, mentions early Christians, early Christians meaning Israelites that believed that the Messiah came and may refer to Jesus Christ in his work, Lives of the Twelve Caesars. <coughs> so this individual, uh, Suetonios, um, if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, please put it in the description box. 
Anyway, um, he wrote a book called Lives of the Twelve Caesars. It says, De Vitti Caesarum. Vitti, De Vitti, Vitti mean to live. Or the, 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 the Vitti, life. Uh, Caesarum, the, the Caesars, commonly known as the Twelve Caesars, is a set of twelve biographies of the Julius Caesar of Julius Caesar and the first 11 emperors of the Roman Empire written by Gaius Suetonius Tranquillus Tranquil meaning the cool to be cool <clears throat> now when you go to <clears throat> second Ezra's the uh, 11 and the 12th chapter it's talking about the 12 Caesars, which were Edomites. After that, Jake took over. The Caesars, after uh, the youngest son of, uh, of Vespasian, Vespasian, you had nothing but Jake's all up in there, because Jake took over. And see, this is the fear, this is the real fear of Esau concerning us, because Jake is, man, you even got Uncle Tom's rising up. And you got a lot of Jakes on different talk shows and, you know, well, now they got their own talk shows and you got a lot of lawyers, doctors. You got a, a lot of, as Lahab would say, up, upwardly mobile Jakes in society. And they can see they've been dealt with badly by the so-called white man. Now, I was listening to a video that... Um, the beloved brother and elder, because he says, he says, beloved this and beloved that. So I'll say it back at him. Beloved uh, brother and elder um, of Malcolm, he had did a video <clears throat> where he was in a coffee shop and he said he had met with one of his clients, which was an Edomite, and, and the Edomite was pissed off. And he really, it was an Edomite getting down on another Edomite, which happened to be a so-called Jew. Now, there's no, somebody can put this in the description box, whether uh, uh, this guy, uh, the Amazon guy, we're just going to call him Mr. Amazon, whether he's a so-called Jew. He does look like one, uh, uh, Bezos, Jeff Bezos. I don't know if that goes back to the so-called Jew, so I don't want to just go ahead and say it, but I'll do the research on it because, you, you know, you got to, before you can make a statement, you have to do the research on it. It says one passage in the, bio, in the biography of the Emperor Claudius Devos, Claudius 25, refers to as agitations, agitations in the Roman Jewish community. Let's look up the word agitations. <laughs> See, the fact that you got a, there's a video that, a couple of brothers did videos on, I didn't do it, because everybody else did it, I didn't have to do it, on vocab being um, employed by the NFL, by the, the chaplains. And, um, and then vocab came along and kind of told his story, and he did say that he met, met up with certain chaplains of the NFL and spoke to certain of the uh, NFL players and um, he said he really didn't get a lot of money from it, but, you know, it's out there. He told his st side of the story, you know, whether he's lying or not, or telling half-truths. But anyway, um, the reason behind him being a consultant is because he's considered, he considers himself an expert on Hebrew as he calls it, Hebrew Israelism. And in a way he is because he's been around us. 
He's watched, checked out our videos. So he knows what we're going to say before we say it. He knows if he throws a question at us, we're going to come with a particular scripture or a particular answer. He already knows it because he came across many of us. Anyway, the reason why they got in contact with him is because you have a lot of NFL players, from what I hear, that, uh, that are watching the videos and they're identifying themselves with being Hebrew Israelites. So that's another form of agitation. This is getting to professional athletes. Now, if it's getting to professional, also, also, um, Vocab had mentioned the uh, NBA as well, that you have a lot of these Jakes in the NBA that are getting turned on by the whole Hebrew Israelite thing. And if, and if that's the case, they rub elbows with top actors, so these actors have to know about us. There's one actor that came to one of our camps in New York. I'm not going to tell you his name. And he basically said, you guys are GMS. He said, yeah. He said, well, I'm, I just came by to see if I can get a blessing. You know, and you know him. If I mention, if I mention his name, you, you would know him. So if he knows he's an Israelite, he knows about GMS. And if he knows about GMS, of course he knows about IUIC and ISUPK and um, uh, HOI and LOI and um, GOCC and uh, uh, what is that? Uh, HODC and all the rest of them, man. Because when you watch one video, you know that we speak about other groups. So they have to know about all the groups that came, from, came out of One West. So anyway, this is, this is, this is, this is, a, 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 they're getting agitated now, you know? You know, one of these actors is going to come out and have a so-called Jew, and he's going to talk about his Judaism, and this guy might lose it and say, look, first of all, you ain't a, you ain't a Jew. We're the real Jews. And that's going to start, and then... <clears throat> What, what Esau is going to do in his media is label us with that magic word, anti-Semitic. Uh, uh, Semitic. Oh, there was this individual. Uh, he was part of Capitol Garden, D.C., and he was caught with the book, the, um, the uh, was it, Learn Elders of Zion, which I didn't know that was a racist book. They said he had an anti- so meaning you can there's certain books you can read and certain books you can't read now? You we losing our rights all over the place. It says um it says here, it says agitation, right? A state of anxiety or nervous excitement, the action of briskly stirring or Disturbing something, especially a liquid or well, a spirit. Um, you know, I'm gonna do. Let me see if I can find this. Let me try it this way. Bear with me for a minute. So, before I go back and read that history, the reason why Claudius Ben uh, expelled the, the, the Jews, which really were the Christians, they called them Christians, um, is because they were raised in hell just like we raised in hell. On the, on the, they were literally on, on the corners, on the street. <laughs> but you didn't have TV back then. <laughs> you didn't have... Excuse me. You didn't have uh, YouTube. So we're raising more hell on YouTube, man. Anyway, let me let me let me find this. Let me see what comes up. It was P it was Peter that said this. Come on already. 
Okay, let me do it. Let me try it this way. Let me try it this way. Okay, I found it. I found it. Which I knew it was uh, Peter. I wasn't sure whether it was... Uh, uh, 2 Peter 2, 2 Peter 1, or 2 Peter 3. It was 2 Peter 3. It says, uh, this second epistle, beloved, I, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, of the commandments of the of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So now when you look up the word stir, it means to wake up, uh, awaken, arouse from sleep. Of the sea which begins to be agitated, to rise metaphorically, to ar ar arouse the mind, stir up, render active. So that's what's happening with the whole, with these brothers in the NFL and the NBA and the acting world. Their minds are getting stirred up by these videos. So Esau is getting nervous. Because you got to maintain that these people that call themselves Jews are the real Jews. And mind you, there's some of them, the so-called Jews, that are actually Israelites. Because we're going to look like everybody. Okay, where am I at? Okay, back at the word agitation. Agitation, state of anxiety or nervous excitement, the action of briskly stirring, we read that about Peter, 2 Peter 3, 1 and 2, stirring or disturbing something, especially a liquid. Well, in this case, is a spirit. Okay, so now let me come back to this. This is on the Wikipedia, Suetonius, on Christians and like I said anytime you read the word Christian going back in this time period those were Israelites that believed in the Lord they, they, they accepted the fact that the Messiah came and you had other Jews I'll use that word Jews that said no we're still waiting for the Messiah and the reason why the so called Jews as we call them and I speak, I used to speak, to, I spoke to a lot of them. You know, when I pick them up, if I go to their communities and I pick them up, I talk to them. And if they ask me, sir, I'll tell them the truth. I start speaking Hebrew to them. And, you know, I'll tell them, I'm, I'm trying to get information out of you. And they'll tell you there's certain sects that, well, they all say that the Messiah didn't come. They're waiting for the Messiah to come. The last major conversation I had with a, a so-called Jew, I mean an authentic um, um, a Hasidim, they wore it all black and so forth, and I pick, picked him up, and we had a good dialogue for about 25 minutes, going back and forth, and in certain Hebrew words, he said that I knew what they meant, you know, hey, hey brother, <laughs> the scriptures say be wise as serpent harmless as a dove, it also says in Romans, if it at all pos possible, be live peaceably with all men. So when I pick them up, I'm cool with them, and they're cool with me. As I, as, as I, and they give you tips too. <laughs> they give you good tips. But you know what? <laughs> like I said, I get information. I tell them, look, I'm trying to get information about what you're all about. So let's get back into this. It says, uh, 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 25, 
and that from the um, the lives of the twelve Caesars. So this guy speaks about all the twelve Caesars. Uh, refers to the uh, refers to the agitations in the Roman Jewish community. Now, when you click on, matter of fact, let me do that. The history of the Jews in the Roman Empire uh, traces the um, interaction of the Jews and Romans during the period of the of the Roman Empire. Their culture began to overlap in the countries just before the Christian era. Jews, as part of the Jewish di diaspora, migrated to Rome. So now if you click on that page, if you go to that word, you click on that page, it'll say, it'll say history of the Jews in, in the Roman Empire, right? Then it'll say Jews in Rome, right? Now, when you go to that, you'll see on the, I mean, you can read it, I'm not going to read it, which there's a lot of information in this. I didn't want to make this long, but it's, begin, it's getting long. Anyway, if you go to this page, Wikipedia, History of the Jews in the Roman Empire, and you look to the right of your screen, you're going to see a figure of a holy man from the third century wall paintings at the synagogue of Dori Europus. Now, I remember Yeshaya, High Priest Yeshaya had a book, um, and he used to show this picture, and you can clearly see that this guy is a Jake. And recently, uh, Priest Danyala had pulled out that same book and spoke about this uh, figure. Um, I guess it's a, you can call, call it Frisco, if, if, if I believe. And he mentions this guy from uh, the third century AD from the synagogue of Dori Europus. And you can see that it's a, a dark skinned man with woolly hair. And he had a long robe on. So these people don't want to have a dialogue with us. Let me try to come back here. Did I lose my page? Wait a minute. Okay, boom. I'm back at uh, Suetonius on Christians. So what I did was, where is it? Okay, what I did was I put the cursor on Roman Jewish community. So if you go to Roman Jewish community, it will take you to that page that I just read with the individual, with the Jake from the synagogue at uh, Dori Europus. It says, um, and I'm reading on, it says, and the uh, expulsion of the Jews from Rome. Now it says, if you put the cursor there, it says uh, references to an expulsion of Jews from Rome by the Roman Emperor, Emperor Claudius, who was in an official AD uh, 41 to 54 AD, appeared in the Acts of the Apostles, to be exact, Acts 18 and 2, in the writings, in the writings of the Roman historian Suetonius uh, Cassius, Dio and fifth century Christian author, uh, Paulos, whatever. You want to read further? Go ahead and read it. So, that situation, that account that took place in Acts um, chapter 18, verse 2, is backed up by history by this uh, famous historian, Suetonius. It says, uh, by Claudius. During his reign, A.D. 41 to A.D. 54, which may be the expulsion mentioned in Acts of the Apostles 18, verse 2, in this context, context 
Christo, which is the Messiah, is mentioned. So that's further proof that they believed in the man that they call Christo. Some scholars see this as a likely reference to Jesus, while others see it as a ref, um, referring to an otherwise unknown person living in Rome. Well, to Romans, he was a, he was just a he's a Negro. He's just another Jew. wasn't important. But the key, the key part of this, the, 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 the key part of this thing that I wanted to bring out was the fact right here. It says, one passage in the biography of the Roman, in, in the, the biography of the Emperor Claudius, Divos Claudius 25 refers to agitations in the Roman Jewish community. The Roman Jewish community. And then you had Jake's dealing with Edomite women and Roman women of the other nations. You know how Jake do. So we look like a lot of different people. Let me see if there's more. Okay, it said unknown, otherwise he was known as unknown person living in Rome. Uh, Christians are explicitly, uh, are explicitly mentioned in Suetonio's biography of the Roman, of the, of the Emperor Nero, which I strongly believe that that could be uh, Trump as among those punished during Nero's reign because Nero, when, when the Apostle Paul was beheaded and and um, the uh, the Apostle Peter was hung upside down. It was during the reign of uh, Nero Caesar. So he gave the order, yeah, put them to death. Why? Because they were, um, what's the term? I always use it. The, the, uh, sedition. Sedition means to say words to get people riled up to do something physical. So that's what they basically charge um, Trump with. They said, no, tr Trump did it. No, he said it. He said this and he said that. And it caused them, what they were, what they were doing was bring out evidence of sedition. So, you know, what, what we're finding out is that these politicians just didn't like uh, Trump. And I, and I believe they would have let him have a second turn term uh, had he had he obeyed because he was doing a lot of his own things anyway it says these punishments are and you hardly ever see Trump now right because of the media <laughs> you, 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 you have you, the real power is the media the media can break, make you or break you they're trying to break uh, this guy uh, Cuomo right now okay these punishments are generally dated to around AD 64, the year of the Great Fire of Rome. And, and the Great Fire of Rome, they say that Nero was supposedly like 30 miles away. And uh, so they said, he said, that's not me. I'm, I'm no, I was nowhere near Rome. But it was said to this day that uh, he was behind, he had set up certain people to start the fire to burn down Rome, and then right after that, he immediately blamed it on the Israelites. You know, there was a point in time where they were feeding the Israelite Christians, last Christians, to the, to the, to the lions for their entertainment. As said in this passage, Suetonios described Christianity as, ex as, as excessive religiosity you know what 
excessive religious religiosity. Let me take that those two words and let's see what I know what religion religiosity means and I know what excessive means. But let's put the phrase in. See what happens. Okay, good. Excessive religiosity is hyper religiosity is a psychiatric disturbance in which a person experiences intense religious beliefs because that's how they point us. You know, you that's a cult. That's a cult. You know, that's a religious cult or episodes that interfere with normal functioning. Hyper-religiosity -religi generally includes abnormal beliefs and a focus on religious content or even atheistic content, content which ref interferes with the work and social functioning. You know, basically, they got to get rid of us because, you know, Edomites are watching us on YouTube and have nightmares, man. You know, you've seen videos of uh, Edomites bowing down and, and kissing Jake's feet because of that fear, that inner fear. That's why they're working so hard, you know, with the NFL. They said, we can't get these uh, celebrities involved in this. So where am I? So excessive religiosity meaning, um, you know, your, 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 um, you know, your religion is, is scary. You know, something can happen from your belief. Even, even, even vocab says that. You got these young guys and you tell them that Esau's going to slavery, they might just start putting people in slavery. Well, we gotta tell them, we gotta tell them whether they whether they gonna do it or not. We're only telling you what the um the scripture said, and rather that ye prophesy. Prophes prophesy means to say what's gonna happen before it happens. So part of what we say in the scriptures is that you people are going into slavery. So you can't say, well, people are gonna get nervous. Well, let them get fucking nervous. They're supposed to get nervous. It says, um, it says, as do his contemporaries, Tatticus and Pliny. These are these are two um, two uh, historians. Ro uh, uh, Tacitus is a Roman historian. I believe he's Jake. Well, he, he got to be Jake. He got the beard. There's a, a statue of him. He's got the beard. He looked like a Jake. Anyway, it says historians debate whether or not the Roman government distinguished between Christians and Jews prior to Nerva's modification. And Nerva is a Jake. Nerva is a Jake. He came on the scene after uh, uh, this guy, um, Domitian. That was a Jake. So it says, Historian, historians update whether or not the Roman government distinguished between Christians and Jews. Well, the, 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 to distinguish between them, the Christians are Jews that believe in the Messiah as opposed to the Jews that did not accept the fact that the Messiah came already. Remember, Christians are Israelites that believe that the Messiah came. You can't be an Edomite or another nation and be a Christian. You have to be an Israelite to be a Christian. It said modifications of the uh, Fiscus Ju Judaicus And the fiscals 
Judeo-Cos was a um, was a tax imposed on Jews, in particular Jews. So they said we're going to put a heavy tax on the Jews and the Christians. That's what the whole Roman Jewish wars was all about. It says in the Roman Empire after the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple in AD 70. So that was a buildup going back from 67 AD, AD 70, even until 74. It said revenues were directed to the temple of Jupiter, Optimus Maximus in Rome. So they said we're going we're going to tax the hell out of, out of the Israelites, so we can so we can build up this temple to um, to Jupiter. Because that's what you devils believed in. You don't believe in the Most High. You believe in your Greco-Roman gods. It says um, in AD ninety six. From then on, practicing Jews paid the tax. Christians did not. <laughs> and who are the Christians? Israelites believe that believed that the Messiah came. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna say shalom.